Magellan thought he found Australia, but Sir Francis Drake proved him wrong. Then poor Dirk Gerritz was blown off course by a storm, and he saw some faraway mountains that we call the South Shetland Islands. Abel Tasman thought he found the southern continent, but he really found New Zealand. Captain Cook was looking for Australia, but he only proved where it wasn't. A few years before the American Revolution, a Frenchman found a green fertile shoreline and named it South France. He thought it was a continent, but it was really only an island as well. At the same time, Captain Cook made another voyage and sailed all the way around Antarctica, but he really didn't know it at the time. During the 19th century, a few other brave explorers and seal hunters really found the South Shetland Islands, but it wasn't until 1820 that Antarctica was officially discovered. But the people who discovered it really didn't realize what they had discovered. In 1821, John Davis actually set foot on the Antarctic continent at Hughes Bay. Whew, <laughs> that's a mouthful. It's cold, dry, high, and largely unexplored, and thankfully there's never been a survivor shot here. That's right, kids. It's Antarctica, 90 degrees south. Hi, I'm Al Valanche, and I'll be leading you on an odyssey of discovery and survival on and around the Earth's wild and rugged southernmost continent. I'll share with you everything. I can about discoveries, research, treaties, geography, geology, weather, climate, biology, and settlement of this landmass at the bottom of the Earth. Well, and along the way, we'll experience what it's like to be in Antarctica. First and foremost, you need to know that Antarctica is the land of extremes. For instance, the coldest temperature ever recorded at the South Pole was minus 126 degrees Fahrenheit. I mean, that's cold. So you should bundle up and be sure not to lick a flagpole while you're there. And it's a pretty good idea never to lick a flagpole. It's cold there all the time. That's the point. The average temperature in the summer is minus 22 degrees Fahrenheit. And in the winter, it drops down to minus 76 degrees Fahrenheit. There's no spring break here. Daylight lasts six months of the year, followed by six months of darkness. Our summer is their winter, and our winter is their summer. So plan that trip. In Antarctica, you'll need to prepare yourself for all kinds of severe weather, especially high wind. You always have to have time for the fans. <laughs> Sometimes it can blow up to 186 miles per hour. That's the type of wind you see in the biggest, most damaging hurricanes. And although you won't find any camels there, Antarctica is the world's largest desert, with only a trace of rain falling there each year. In fact, no rain has fallen in parts of Antarctica called the Dry Valley for more than two million years. Well, there's no swimming there. You'll also find the world's longest glacier. It's located in the Lambert Fisher Ice Passage. Now, this glacier is 320 miles long and 25 miles wide. There's also another phenomenal chunk of ice floating around there, the largest iceberg ever recorded. Now, if you can believe it, this iceberg is the size of Belgium, or 12,000 square miles. Yeah, where's Leonardo DiCaprio when you need him? It broke free from Antarctica's Ross Ice Shelf in 1956. And there's the possibility that even a bigger one broke free from Antarctica's Ross Shelf sometime before March 2000. Now, icebergs are made of fresh water and break off in pieces. Now, only about an eighth of these icebergs are visible above the water, much like me when I go swimming. So you can see now that Antarctica is truly a land of extremes. So be prepared. All right, we all know that Antarctica is the continent at the geographic bottom of the Earth. It's a huge landmass, all right? That wasn't where it is today. Antarctica was once part of a large landmass called Pangaea. About 200 million years ago, Antarctica and Australia were joined together. Yeah, but because of plate tectonics or the moving and shifting of the land caused by Earth forces, Antarctica and Australia separated. Bye. Bye. Now, Antarctica drifted south to its present location. The continent is a huge island in the middle of a vast ocean, and... Ocean currents affect everything there. The Antarctic Convergence Zone is where the cold water of the south and the warmer water of the north meet. This is one wild area of ocean, kids. This is one big hunk of ice, and it's how everyone used to keep things cold. People used to have blocks of ice delivered to their homes to load into their ice boxes. You know, the earliest refrigerators. Of course, they stopped it when they realized this was just too bulky to fit into a glass with pop. 
Now, Antarctica has no need for ice deliveries because 90% of the world's ice is already there. And there are more than 80 different kinds of ice. When the Antarctic sea ice starts to grow in the winter, it eventually doubles the size of the continent, adding an amount of ice larger than all the land in the United States. I mean, there's so much ice there, only about 2% of Antarctica's land shows through. The average thickness of the ice sheet is about one and a quarter mile. And at its thickest point, the ice is two and three quarter miles thick. This massive ice sheet holds more than 70% of the Earth's fresh water. Okay, if you took away all of Antarctica's ice, the continent would rise about a half a mile. And if all the ice there would suddenly melt, well, the oceans would rise 200 or more feet. <laughs> if that happened, you'd need some scuba gear to walk down to Bourbon Street in New Orleans, which is currently at sea level. Now, we know there are more than 70 freshwater lakes beneath the Antarctic ice sheet. One of them, Lake Vostok, which is Norwegian for, wow, it's cold, is buried 2.5 miles beneath the ice. Now, there are actually three South Poles. The geographic South Pole, also known as 90 degrees south. This is where longitude lines on the map radiate out. Then there's the South Magnetic Pole. This is where the compass points straight up. Finally, there's the South Geomagnetic Pole, which moves because of the fluid in the center of the Earth. As you look around the continent, you'll see mountains. The tallest is the 16,000-foot Vincent Massif. And there's an active volcano, Mount Erebus on Ross Island, which has been continuously active since 1972. You won't find any trees or bushes there, and only about 350 plant species, mostly mosses, lichens, and algae. There's also one thing there that you can't see, but it's having a negative worldwide effect. The ozone hole, which occurs over Antarctica, is caused by man-made chlorine and bromine containing pollutants in the atmosphere, destroying stratospheric ozone. If you want to see a polar bear, you'll have to go to the zoo before your trip to Antarctica. There are no polar bears or any other land mammals in Antarctica. Why? Because it's cold! And you won't need your insect repellent, because any flying insects would be blown away by the heavy winds. <laughs> I guess our fangirl left. But you might see some flea-like creatures that hang around with the penguins. Now, there's a group of fish there called ice fish, which don't have any hemoglobin in their blood to carry oxygen. See, oxygen dissolves better at low temperatures, so they don't have a need for it. Their blood is colorless. At one time, there were a lot of dogs in Antarctica, but... They no longer use dog teams to get around. This is to protect the seals from diseases that dogs carry. And at one time, when Antarctica was much further north, dinosaurs roamed Antarctica. We know this because they have found fossils there, not made out of rubber or inflated. So, how will you make your next trek to the southern continent? Will you fly in from New Zealand or Chile? Or will you brave the swells of the Drake Passage aboard a ship? Now, when you arrive, will you grab a set of cross-country skis? Or will you hitch a ride on Antarctica's version of the SUV? Will you pitch a tent, grab a bunk in one of the research station's Quonset huts? Whatever you decide, I hope you'll be up to the task. Welcome to the land of midnight sun and noontime darkness. Welcome to Antarctica, 90 degrees south. <laughs>